No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. How do I say it? Inaz X? Inez. Inez X. Ooh, okay. it sounds interesting in here. What's going on? You got a bunch of reverb and shit? Reverb? Do so you fuck with it? Do we? It sounds good. It sounds good? Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, that's good to know. Sounds good. <laughs> Is it crazy? Do I look funny with this? No, you look fine. Okay. Although, yeah, a lot of times girls are worried about their hair or whatever. Yeah, all they put the, the time. headphones on, yeah. 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 Or even dudes come in with just weird ass haircuts and yeah, they're just facts. all about preserving it, you know? Facts. I mean, in the studio, I don't give a fuck. I'm just like, whatever. But now that it's like, mm-hmm. well, okay, see, that there's an interesting question because a lot of dudes, rappers that I know, they go in the studio where nobody can see them and then they put on like $1,000 shoes and they got $3,000 pants and right, they just wear right. this crazy like, designer. Fuck? Yeah. And yeah. maybe you see it a little bit on the gram, but you don't see too much of it. Like No, I mean, it is. A, it, it, it is. It's all about the fucking gram. Because mm. if not, even for me, like, I just want to look like shit in the studio. I don't want to care. You You're know? not in full glam in the studio? Most of the time, no. Because I just want to, like, zone out. You know what I mean? Mm. But then it's like, if I'm getting photos that day or if right. I know I'm getting video, I got to look good and shit. Like, even today, I was like, can I just wear sweatpants? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like, no, damn, but, we're recording it? Fuck. But okay, that's right. real, though. People have different, like, sometimes girls will come in with no makeup on and, yeah. like, sweatpants and shit. And then they realize, like, oh, oh it's a recording? video yeah. podcast, not audio. And they're like, oh. I've had girls, like, basically cancel it the day of, like, porn star chicks who just for some reason didn't realize that they were going to be on camera. Yeah. See, if I didn't know, like... I'm a fan. I watch this shit. But oh, okay, if I didn't, cool. then I'd be like, I wouldn't have known. I'd right. be like, oh, it's, yeah, it's a radio interview. We're fine. <laughs> so, yeah, this yeah. is fuck when I get here. But these days, everything's pretty much video. Or yeah, at least period. you're taking photos to go with yeah, the audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, but I think that's interesting, though, because it's like a lot of these rappers, though, I feel like they don't feel like they can really get into the mind state of making the drippiest sauciest well, why, music why? unless Let's they're get into in their it. full why? outfit because they're capping <laughs> most of the time okay most of the time it's full cap mm. so it's just like oh yeah let me just cap to wear all my designer shit but it's like i'm gonna return it tomorrow please everyone needs to stop capping right wear now. every single chain even when you're in the house yeah literally mm. but in the reality of it is it's just like you know if they're really going to just fucking create you don't need to do all that shit you That's know what real. I mean? Like, you really don't. Like, mm. you know. But if you want to, like, flex on the gram, which most of the time they do, but I bet you anything, if you catch them at, like, 5 a.m. or 6 a.m., they look fucking crazy, you know? Yeah, but, I mean, that's kind of the thing is to buy the crazy expensive drip and then just wear it and, like, yeah. make, get it dirty. Get Cheeto stains on the Gucci and right. just fucking rock it and then throw it away. Right, right. It's so stupid, but that's kind of, like, the ideal that they're going towards. Because every, rappers always talk about only wearing shoes once in their songs now. yeah. That's such a weird thing that's to brag about. That's such a girly about. thing to do, you know? <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, that's why when, that's old, thing to do. when old school rappers are like, all these new rappers act like bitches, blah, blah, right. blah. You know, uh, it's like, I get it. I get what you're saying for I sure. I get it for sure. I mean, like, there's some girls that are wearing, like, baggier shit than guys nowadays. Mm. You know, it's like, it's almost like the fucking roles are reversed almost sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, right. I see, like, a girl, mad swag, baggy shit, then a guy with, like, tight ass, you know? And I'm like... All right. I tell my girlfriend that too because she thinks that she needs to wear some crazy ass raver thought outfit when we go to fucking festivals <laughs> and shit. And I like, one time she was like really upset because she didn't have time to get her makeup professionally done before going to fucking Rolling Loud or what something. Is, is, she, is she Middle Eastern? She's Armenian. Okay. Yeah, I'm Middle Eastern. We're always mm, doing the most. That's, it's just like, okay. in the, it's, it's like the thing. It's yeah. always just doing, we just always feel like, oh, I got a full glam. You got to go hard. But nowadays it's so true. Like it's fine. You can wear... Of anything, like That's literally, what I told her. I'm and like, swagged out. I'm like, wear leggings and some fucking boots yeah. and like a sweater and... You could like fucking wear a hat or you can just like put your hair up. Right. You're going to look fine. Everybody there is n- like not going to judge you as if you're not doing exactly. enough. Exactly. Or you know what I peep lately? It's like if I wear like fly ass sneakers, like mm. I get so many more compliments than if I wear heels. Yes. Like it's crazy. Like I literally just got like these like ones and they're like really cool colors and shit. And everyone's like, whoa, like those are sick. Everyone. Right. And like when I wear heels, it doesn't matter. Like fucking whatever they don't care like oh cool you could wear a super basic outfit but if your sneakers are really really dope it's facts Mm. even as a girl it's like oh okay but how miserable are high heels honestly honestly it's just like right now i personally i'm i'm short so i've always like been like you know i'm fun size actually but five two okay my girlfriend also five two yeah that's that's the thing you know fun size so it's like we always want to wear heels because we always because being short like i hate i'm always looking up you know Mm. And there's a sort of fucking little, like, what's the word? Like, you kind of feel a little, 
lesser than sometimes next to some chick who's five nine but, and yeah. it's just towering like, over yeah, you know. it's, it's annoying so i'll always wear heels but lately i've just been on this like i don't give a fuck anymore like i don't want my feet to look ugly anymore like i want you know what i mean we wear heels it fucks up your feet like mm. you get all these weird bun you know what i mean like all these i gotta get pedicures and like tell them like shave these bunions down these fucking heels are killing me you know Ooh, a lot of times when you're going out you're basically committing to standing up for Period. like three four five Period. hours let me tell you right now. In those things? When I fucking go out, like, I'm out for an hour, two hours, and oh, then I'm like, okay. give my money, I'm out. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't give a fuck. That's the attitude? <laughs> yeah, because it's just like, it hurts. It's painful. It, it really is. Yeah. It really is. Like, you're standing in the heels, you know, like, you can't do shit about it. You know, you're not going to take your heels off and look crazy. So it's like... <sighs> Man, I feel for you. You got like the crazy ass long nails though. So don't try to act like you're low maintenance. I know. Definitely not. <laughs> you have like all Proudly kinds of high jewels <laughs> encrusted in those too and everything. Like every nail has a different pattern Period. on it. Period. Holy shit. Shout out my nail girl. She's the best. How much does that cost, honestly? Honestly, she cooks me the fuck up. Like these are not expensive. But really? she, But they look expensive. They do. But she's my girl. She's Armenian as well. Oh, she's wow. my girl. And she has my birthday. So right. she's the shit. Christina, shout out. Christina, she's so, the shit. So where'd you grow up in Brooklyn? I grew up in Sunset Park. Okay. Yeah. And it was lit. But then I moved to Connecticut as a teenager and it was like the worst. What, your family started getting money and so you moved to Connecticut? Yeah. Pretty wow. Much. What, what were your parents doing? I mean, my mom started her own business. Like, I come from like a super strong, independent woman. Uh -huh. My stepdad was always fucking shit up, you know? <laughs> was he a criminal? Goes. No, he was just like, you know, it's like Middle Eastern men are super like, right. you know? And it's like this. He was just not a good guy, you know? Mm. And finally, thank God, she's not with him anymore, thank God. But, but he found a good woman to sort of mooch off of? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and then, like, now that they're not together, finally, she, he doesn't know how to survive. Like, really? you know, yeah, like, it's that. Because it's like the women are supposed to, like, do everything and shit, you know? And normally the men are the breadwinner, but in my mom's situation, she was just, she was the boss. She just started her own business in the medical field and just went crazy. Do you see that strain in yourself as well that you might be like a boss bitch who's just got like a fucking safari dragging you down? I mean, I literally... <laughs> no offense I, to safari, I'm sure No, great like guy. literally I fucking have been in so... Like every situation I've been in has been that. And I feel like finally it's like breaking that, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like breaking that whole cycle. Right. You know, because I, I'm very like dominant and very like... Rawr, aggressive woman but mm. then it's like i want to be taken care of by my man you right. know what i mean and i want him to be equal to me or even higher, you know what i mean like i look up to you you right. know rather than fucking me taking care of my you know you that's got, pathetic you, you date rappers and ball players and shit i mean <laughs> in the beginning of my career i've definitely made like a lot of stupid fucking decisions mm. you know what i mean and like now i'm just like not really yeah i mean like in the beginning of my career like i was signed to the same level as fetty wap yeah. so like like, you know, I, I was dating someone, I was in a relationship and everything, you know, during Within that time. Within the 1738 crew? Um, kind of, not really, kind of. Okay. And then it was kind of a situation where when hey, I boogie. was on tour. Six nine. No, but when I was on tour, <laughs> listen to this story. So when I was on tour, hold on, let me fix my fucking headphones because they're falling off. You don't have to wear them if you don't want it, by the way. I know. Am I? Can, can I not? I kind of like listening to us, though. It's cool, though, right? I really do. It's like the vibrating yeah, of your you, own voice yeah. and the other person's voice in your ear. In and your it feels ear. Kind of good, it, yeah, you know? it adds to it. You and know? You're, you're making it so you can't hear anybody else. Exactly. Too, so nice, I so. fucking like it. Hmm. So anyway, so yeah, when I was on tour, I was in a relationship. But then I found out, like, I was on tour with Fetty and Post, you know? And mm. it was, like, huge at the time. And I was with this fucking guy who was not it at right. all. And he's back home stressing yeah. you out he was just stressing me the fuck out right right and he wasn't he was not that dude and i had like fetty who's like on my dick but like i was just you know like i was in a relationship Staying loyal yeah you were you were I the loyal type you really didn't yeah, cheat on this guy i really did okay. it okay listen to this shit mm. so then i find a fucking video on his phone him fucking another girl oh my god yeah Okay, I was young. I was really young and I was really naive, but I was like really loyal to him and I didn't want to do anything. So at the time, I like didn't have, like, I never told anyone this story. I'm gonna tell you the story. I, feel special as I know. I feel like people come on here and tell shit that they never tell anyone. So it's like a thing. So I was like, this is it. This is the place to tell the story if you're gonna Sounds tell it. Sounds good. So then, you know, we were in, you know, whatever, and I found that video. And then Fetty was kind of like, you know, I am me, but you know, he always had his hoes and shit. And I was just like, eh, I don't want to be one of those. Mm. My guy, like, I know, like, he had cancer, he had chemo, he couldn't have kids. 
So I wasn't on birth control because I just like, I was used to that with my guy, you know, right. that was like, I didn't have to worry about kind that. Kind of a you bonus. Know? Like, yeah, it was a bonus. I didn't have to worry about shit, you, <laughs> you know. You almost died, but we don't have to wear a condom. Yeah, exactly, you know, <laughs> period. But so, you know, on tour, you know, me and Fetty, like I finally was just like, fuck it, I'm just going to do it. I don't care, you know. Right. Because after I found that video on my guy's phone, I was like, fuck you. Uh-huh. So me and Fetty had a little fling for like a while, okay. you know, on tour. And then after tour, I was pregnant. With this guy? With Fetty's baby. Whoa. Yeah. And I had to, you know, I took care of it. But, you know, and that's why, like, I was so, like, I was like, you know, I do want to talk about this. Because I was like, think about it. And I was like, don't talk about it. But it's like, Pete, the whole, like, abortion conversation is, like, a thing now. Mm. And it's just like, hold on. We can't fucking take away women's rights like this. Like, I, I was not ready to have a baby, mm. you know. And I don't give a fuck how many baby mamas did it. And right. they did it. Power to them. Right. I don't see them doing shit now. No offense. I don't care. I'll say it. I don't give a fuck. No, I mean, so we got like, we got to keep a women's rights to have an abortion for sure because yeah. we definitely don't need some one-eyed baby with mad <laughs> chains on just running around America and shit, fake dreads, all that. That's and my not... thing is, especially when I would be one of nine, my like baby mamas, like that's so embarrassing. And for my- He already has that, eight? I don't know. Probably. <laughs> Something like that? Something like oh that, right? God. And it's like at the beginning of my fucking career, that right. would have ruined- me, did you, you have know? people like your friends and shit who are telling you like you don't want to do this because that's gonna sort of taint your image because yeah. you know women are judged super harshly no, like that in the industry especially. Everybody was telling me right that you cannot fucking do this like you will be a, like you look like an idiot like I was the artist like you know we were on the same label like it was like you know as an artist all you want people is to always take you seriously with your music and shit you know mm. what I mean so for me to be like baby mama number nine or whatever the fuck I would have been right that looks pathetic you know so everybody was like telling me no but I already knew like no so did the, you know? did the boyfriend get broken up with before you had this abortion I and mean, stuff or how did we that happen? were like still you know toxic relationship shit we going were still, back and forth yeah. yeah and like you know he knew that it wasn't his and that's when our relationship went so haywire i could imagine yeah. yeah it was really bad it was wow. really bad so that was like after that experience i was like really scarred was fetty distressed about the baby or at this point is that just like whatever for him it's just whatever for him <laughs> he's you know? just happy to have he another hot girl a with a baby <laughs> he doesn't give a fuck <laughs> and like, i don't bl- like i like don't know because his parent like i don't know his mom he's a good mama uh-huh. you know like i love his mama and I was like, damn, like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Like, you're, you know, your mom is so respectful, but who knows? You don't know what people go so through. So he has a kid and then it's just like, he'll hang out with it a little bit, but he's not really pressed to spend that much time with it? Hell no. I don't think that, like, <laughs> listen, I don't know how he is as a father. He looks like a good father, but I wouldn't want to have a baby with someone who has fucking nine baby mamas. Like, it, mean, that's <laughs> so embarrassing. That's so, like, that's not what I want. I don't so, even have nine friends. Like, you feel me? <laughs> My circle's that small, bro. So it's like, oh, hell no, this is not it. So for me, it was like the best decision that I made in my life. Right. And then now it's like this whole conversation, like stopping abortion. like, what the fuck are we talking about? Are yeah. we being serious? No, like, for real. Like if you are allowing people to, or you're forcing people to have kids that they don't want to have, those kids are going to grow up with shitty fucking upbringing. So they're going to get into crime and they're going to be hanging out at the bus stop and shit. You don't want that. You want yeah. people to only be having kids if they really want to be having kids. Period. But was, and I'm, I apologize if this is too intrusive, but was the abortion like traumatic for you or is it a relatively it was smooth so process? Traumatic. Really? I mean, because, okay, there's a couple reasons why it was traumatic. So I had the abortion in April. I was on, tour. we were on tour from January, February, March. Mm. I had the abortion in April. Like it was like that. And right. then in July, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And like they say, it was insane. And they say that when a woman gets pregnant, Like with MS, like that's what brings out, you know, like different attacks and because your hormones go so up and then they go so down. Wow, really? So, yeah. So it was like the most traumatic, like couple months of my life. And this was like my first national tour with fucking the biggest artist at the time and Post Malone right before Post blew the fuck up, too, you know? And like this is like, I'm on Billboard, I'm on this and that. And then all this shit happened, you know? Holy shit. So it was just like, yeah, it was, it was a lot. So that is insane. It was so traumatic that I was just like, yeah. So what did, did you have a hunch that you were sick for a while leading up to this diagnosis or were you okay and then you just found out? I mean, it was like literally insane. When I tell you insane, like I started like around in June, uh-huh. I started like my the vision in my left eye started going right. and it was crazy that it was my left eye. And then I started like seeing double vision. I had an optic nerve attack. And then, who is stomping? 
Sorry about that. <laughs> People <laughs> it's, upstairs. It's, it's, it's such a dark topic. I know. It's a, it's a, we, we didn't, we're not really supposed to have a studio in here. So I, people oh, just shit, walking that's around why? upstairs. Yeah, it was sort of like a spur of the moment. Fuck. Thing. Yeah. Every fucking building in Hollywood and West Hollywood was built like this. So whatever. Yeah. But yeah, it's just, it was insane. Like, And then I got the diagnosis and I started treatment and it was like, Oh, how am I going to deal with all this? You know, it was really, it was just a lot. So in terms of what that's going to be like for you, is this the kind of thing that's just going to sort of steadily get worse and worse for you? Or like, what's it, what's it like for you diagnosis wise? I mean, thank God, like I'm doing amazing. Like I'm on treatment and I'm doing like the treatment's working amazing for me. Uh So like, it's almost like we reversed it and I feel like I feel cured. Like I feel amazing. You know, I really do. And I just... It was a very traumatic time for me. Uh-huh. And I was also in like a bad deal, like record deal too at the same time. So, so it was what just, was the RFG Productions is the name RGF, of the label? RGF, yeah. That's RGF. who pretty much, yeah. That's who Fetty is signed to. People thought I was signed to Fetty, but no, we're signed to the same label. Okay. You know, and it was just, it was bad. I feel, you know, I feel bad for him and every every artist that was signed. Because How did they discover you? Um, I met Wap at an event in New York. Uh-huh. He's from Jersey. I'm from New York, you know. And I moved back to New York eventually and whatever. And um, I met him at an event and I had just worked with like the Timbaland camp and all this shit and like new artist shit. But like they wanted to sign me. And then I was just like, I didn't know. You know, I was so young and I didn't fucking know. Mm. I didn't know anything, you know. Right. So like. Did you have any kind of social media following already or are you sort of just. A little bit. Not really. Yeah. Like it was just like I had like 30,000 when I met Fetty and it was just like da da da, you know. And And how old were you? I was like 19, oh, 20. Wow. And you're yeah. just, being 19 as a, as a woman, especially, and just having to figure out what label to sign with this shit is just such it's, a. It was a lot. You're so not prepared, and there's almost nobody that you can really turn no to. One. Unless you're lucky and you end up with a really good, like, music lawyer. But I mean, it's, it's tough to come by. I just by. feel like so, like, you know, like people who just get lucky off their first try are like Very so rare. fucking blessed oh, you know yeah. like it's like fuck you that's know? why it's crazy seeing taylor swift come out and be like oh i don't know my masters or whatever because right. every other musician right. in the industry is like nobody owns their fucking right. early catalog it's, which is swift terrible is like, but it's so true what's happening to her right now is fucked up i feel bad mm. for her she is just like oh man the weird fuck. thing about it though is that she's like weaponizing her fan base to go after these dudes who are basically <laughs> doing the exact same thing that everybody else in the music industry right. is doing like i heard joe budden talking about it the other right. day and he He's like laughing about it because that's his career is that his early albums are owned by somebody else because exactly. he signed to a label. Exactly. It's everybody, yeah. And that's the great thing about what happened to me and the deal ending and it, me getting out and stuff is like they would have owned me for the rest of my life. How did you get out of the deal? It just wasn't that kind of long term deal. Was it, like it wasn't that long deal? term mm. and it was like a production deal and they had to give me a label deal. Wow. It's fucked, you know, because WAP got, they got him a deal with 300, you know, Uh and that was the goal. They had to get me a bigger deal, you know? Right. But it was just, they were just, oh, it was a fucking disaster, you know? Because they just couldn't do anything for you or what was the deal? Yeah, it was called, it was like, our tour was like, welcome to the zoo. And it was like, welcome to the motherfucking zoo. It was a zoo? (laughs) (laughs) It was a zoo. It was insane. Really? Just crazy bad shit going on every day? A lot of bad shit going on. Really? A lot of bad shit. A lot of shady shit. A lot of people stealing shit. A lot of people doing fuck shit. Like shady shit. Wow. And you're yeah. just brand new in the industry, just taking this all in. Like, what the fuck is yeah, going on? Yeah, what the fuck is me? this? Yeah. And I'm I'm like so naive. You know what I mean? Like if I it's a like whole fucking saying, if I knew then what I know now type shit, you know what I mean? Like I wouldn't have tolerated any of it. But like at the time it was like were you like a young girl dreaming about being a recording artist, or is this something that just sort of popped up as like a girl who was just yeah, it was like it this was is was always my dream it was, was always dream. to do music, be on tour. You know what I mean? Like that was always my dream. So uh-huh. finally, my dreams are coming true. You know, like I'm on tour, I'm on radio, I'm on Billboard, all this shit. But like I'm in a fucked up deal, I'm in a fucked up relationship, I'm in fucked up situations. I'm in like just all these fucked up things. And it was a lot of it was my decisions. You know, you can't like blame everybody forever, you know? Hmm. Like it was my decisions. I made these decisions. Like I decided to sign the deal. You know right. what I mean? Because I was fucking per- opening up for him and performing in front of 10, 2,000, 3,000, 10,000 people. You it know? It feels like the biggest thing in the world at that time. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like a real performer. That's my thing. You really? know what I mean? So yeah, that's my shit. That's my thing. So when I get on that stage, I just lose myself, you know? And that's what I love more than anything. So for me, it was like I'm able to do what I love more than anything. It's such a big fucking scale, and I've only been doing music for like two years. You know what I mean? Like at the time, so it was all like, or even less. So it was all like amazing at the time. You know what I mean? Right. Like I started as an intern at Def Jam, and then yeah, when you were what, like eighteen, nineteen? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. And what was that like? Is that was that 
as an introduction to the music industry, how was that? Being real, like honestly, like I see, I saw so young how fucked up the industry was. You really? know what I mean? Yeah, like how fucked up it is to like women. You know what I mean? Like most of the, and it's like a, it's a sucky thing, and I feel like it's changing. Maybe I want to see what you think. Okay. Because I feel like. Obviously, most of the guys just want to fuck. Obviously, most of these execs, you know, that's how the fuck they are. You uh, know, they just want to smash or they're just trying to finesse or whatever the fuck they're doing. You know, homie really? on homie on homie. So whatever. you just felt that because, I'm, I mean, most people in the music industry, for the most part, like on a professional end, it is mostly dudes. It just dudes. doesn't end up with that many. And it doesn't matter if you look like a, a, gir a girl. If you, As long as you got a pussy, they want to fuck. <laughs> really? Like, dead ass. Like, it doesn't matter. Because I know girls that look like straight up boys and they still get mad dudes that want to fuck them. And really? I'm like. You look like a boy. I, I don't feel understand. like I'm so oblivious to this because, like, really? to, to me, I would never try anything right. with a girl in the industry because, because you, it seems so a, problematic. And, and you I got have a girl, a girl yeah, yeah, yeah. that you fuck with. Right. Most of these dudes don't have that. You know what I mean? Right. They have girls that they don't fuck with but or I, whatever, I, you know? I'll, I'll holler at like a fucking stripper or a porn star, but girls in the music industry, right. I'm just so like aware of what their position is and yeah, how. Yeah, you know, it's a power you know? thing. Yeah, it's a exactly, power thing. Yeah. They try to fucking take power mm. from like, and these little young artists or whatever, and it's like they're easy prey or we're easy prey, whatever the fuck. You know what right. I mean? Like when I was young and naive, I was an easy. Yeah, because you're in the ultimate shitty situation because you're yeah. super young, you're super cute, and you got all these fucking weird ass dudes right. who realistically are not around that much female talent probably period and it's like oh you're talented uh, easy prey you know Ooh, like they're yeah. like piranhas you know what i mean and then the women i was expecting the women to be like supportive and uh, <laughs> sorry i have this cough <laughs> i had this woman who's still in my life and she's like my mentor and mm. she was like always giving me game she was always like if i would have just listened to her it would have been fine right. but then i had these other women that were like hating on me you know being fucking like, oh, she's trying to take my position, so fuck her. You're like, no, oh, I'm not really? trying to take your position, bitch. I don't care. I don't want this position. Trust You're talking me. about, like, successful female recording <laughs> artists? No, like, these exe female execs oh, really? that you expect to be supportive, and they're not. Really? You know what I mean? Some are. Some are really about the women empowerment shit that they talk about. They uh -huh. really are. They're like, You're a woman. I've got it. I got your back. You know what I mean? And I've right. had those experiences, thank God. But then I've also had these experiences, like, these girls, like, they're so, like, bitchy and catty and, like, oh, no, she wants my position. Fuck her. Get her out. Right. And that's how it was for me. Wow. So I lost my internship after a month because I couldn't get credit from my school. I was too young. And then, like, because you're supposed to be, like, a fucking junior and I was only, like, a freshman. So it was just, like, they didn't let me. And then... Like, you know, I couldn't, st I couldn't continue. The girls I was interning for in the publicity department were like, no, we can't, we can't. And so Fetty was the first person that actually recognized you as having talent? Yeah, like he was the first one, like legit, but after Timbaland and them. Oh, okay, but like right. the Timbaland thing was just more so like, you know, like he was my favorite producer and like, you know what I mean? I was like, I would have worked with Timbaland. But I was like, in the gym the other day and Timbaland walked in. You know... He, he like lost a lot of weight. It was great. Yeah, his <laughs> huge <laughs> triceps. His arms are gigantic. Like it was just like, but at the time it was weird because he was he would like hit on me too, and I was like fucking nineteen, bro. Fucking relax, you Jeez. know. And like it was just sad. And then like Fetty was the first one, yeah, that like believed in me and was like, I love your music, and was like, you know what I mean, like. And for me at that time, I was like, oh my god, you but, know. What but I mean? is it weird that like when someone really seems like they really believe in you in the music industry, that, that usually they're also trying to fuck? Yeah, but you know what? With Fetty, it was almost like like he brought it to the team, and then the team was like, oh, we gotta sign her. Like it was like more that. professional. Yeah, it okay. was more, and it wasn't like it was more like, oh, she's fucking dope. You know what I mean? Mm. It wasn't like, oh, this whole like it wasn't that. It was like she's dope, and we need to work with her. And then, and then it became like we were on tour, and we were like, look, mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> and like oh, I, I remember like the time that I knew I went to go get like a they had these chocolate covered strawberries, and he had the whole box, and he just like here take the whole box, and I was like. Okay. <laughs> like, oh, you know? what a Romeo, yeah. Yeah, no, at the time, you know, when you're fucking young, you don't fucking know. Like, you're just like, oh, my God, he gave me a whole box of strawberries? That's so cute. And, you that know. Cute. You know, it was sweet. Like, shit like that, you know? But it was it was more so, yeah, like, the team and everybody was just like, she's the fucking dopest. So, right. at the time, it just made me feel, like, really good because they were so, like, hot. But uh -huh. then it was like, and then they were not. So, so. <laughs> when, when did you end up getting out of this deal and how did that work? I got out of it about a year ago. I just had to wait for it to end because they didn't want to let me out. Uh -huh. So it was like really bad. Like they didn't want to let me out. And then it was like, oh, you can go to court and all that bullshit. And I was like, yeah, we're not doing that because it's going to take more time than waiting for it to end. You know? So you feel like reborn now because you're. Hell you're out of yeah. That deal? Oh, fuck yeah. 
yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a couple, like, you know, transformations in that time. You know what I mean? And really? it was like, oh, what yeah. What changed? Musically or personality-wise? I mean, like, everything, really, because I... I went through the whole diagnosis. I went through that. I went right. like everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I just like like went through a couple transformations, you know? And then like also with the music, I was making like super pop music. And then I was like, you know what? Like I need to tap into my New York side, you know? Uh -huh. And my fucking rail side real quick. And I did that. You know what I mean? But right. like, you know, because I sing and I rap. And uh -huh. that's always been the thing. But it was just like when I was signed to them, I was like the pop girl. Right. And that's what they kept me as, the pop girl. And I was just like, I'm not just some bubblegum poppy bitch. You know what I mean? They that's wanted not... you in that category, but you're out here like, nah, I'm a real Brooklyn bitch. Yeah, period. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But it's like sides to a bitch. You know mm. what I mean? Like, I got my sides. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I got my vulnerable sides. I got my sides where I want to go poppy. And then I got my sides where I like going hard. You know right. what I mean? So you work with writers at all? Or you do all your own shit? I mean, I read a lot, but I do like working. Like, I do like the collaboration process. Right. I do. I think, like, as artists, we all need it. I just, um, yeah, I just did a feature with Little Zan, and I made him, like, I made him rewrite his verse. Really? Yeah. Wow. And I was, I even offered him a writer and everything. And he was like, no, I'm just trying to write my own shit right Wait, now. Wait, you didn't like his verse? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be real. So you were doing a feature on his song or he was getting he on He was your getting shit? on my shit. How'd you guys even end up working together? Um, through a mutual person that we know. Okay. Yeah, like a video person and shit. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, oh, we want to shoot your shit. They shot um, the Danny Lay, Chris Brown shit. And they shot like a bunch of shit. And they were oh, like, wow. and I just put out a new video. So they reached out to me and they were like, we want to do your shit. And I had a song with him already, uh -huh. but like they were like, "Oh, we should you should do a song." But I wasn't really on it that much. I was just on it like a little bit, like little couple bars. Right. And they were like, "No, you should. We should do like a real song and have him hop on it and like do da da." So like I I, get, I threw him a song that I already had, and then he hopped on it, and then literally this is happening like now. And then he was just like, "Yeah," I was like, "Yeah, I don't like the verse, so you need to rewrite it." <laughs> Or I'll give you a writer. And he agreed to it? Yeah. I feel like he pretty much, if a pretty girl tells him to do something, he's just going to do it. No, he agreed to it. But <laughs> That's my it impression wasn't, of it was, it was hard. It was hard. Because I, I was scared that he was going to be offended. You know? He's so soft. And I feel like, like, I literally feel like if a pretty girl tells him to do something, he's just going to do it. So I kind of like feel like I know exactly <laughs> how that situation is. Like, I literally saw Lil Xan lock eyes with Selena Powell. And he like immediately forgot he had a girlfriend. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was that was when I knew he had a problem. Oh, like, my God. like girls too much, my friend. <laughs> you a fan of Selena Powell? I saw her shit with you. That shit was fucking hilarious. I, I went to Rolling See, Loud. This bitch is crazy. I went I to Rolling it. Loud and so many people brought that up to me that it was like it was the only thing I had ever done was that because so many people were like, oh my God, I just watched that thing with Selena. I'm like, holy fuck, that shit like took over the world. It really did. I don't know. I feel like people really want to hear like, like the fuck shit, like more than anything. You, you probably know? know a lot of girls who could tell us all the fuck shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it hard to stay out of the fuck shit or are you in the fuck shit? I mean, for me, I was, you mm. know what I mean? When I was like younger, you know, I would get myself in these fucking situations, you know, really? like be Going at Chris Brown's and house shit. and shit and to be like, why am I here? Chris Brown's <laughs> house. How was that? Um, <laughs> Remember the NDA? <laughs> no, fuck no. You didn't sign it? Hell no. Did you see it? I walked the fuck out. Really? On God. And, then, and I like him as an artist and I still respect him as an artist always. He's an amazing artist. But like personally, I don't fuck with none of that shit. None of what? The NDA shit? Just like fucking naked bitches running around, drugs everywhere and shit. And like, That's I just, what it was like? Yeah, like pounds of coke and shit on the table. I don't give pounds. a fuck. This is the real. I'm going to be real. Niggas need to stop fucking capping and stop fucking fronting because that's the fucking real. And like that shit is whack. Wow. And so like, you, you, know, you weren't into the vibe? Hell no. And then it was just like, well, are you going to join? Fuck no, nigga. I'm out. All you the, got all, me fucked up. All the other girls that you were with or whatever, they were down? How'd you even end up going there? Oh, okay. So this is what happened. So the first, I, I got this random fucking phone call one day. Uh -huh. Okay. I swear to God, on my life, right hand to the Bible. Oh, God. I got a random phone call one day and it was him. Uh -huh. I don't know how the fuck he got my number. He's like, oh, it's CB. I'm like, what? Who's this? Some of these rappers and shit, man. I swear they got like fucking phone banks I, I just of don't girls understand and shit, how the fuck you got my number like what the fuck this is when i first like kind of moved to la right and um like you know i don't know this shit i'm like oh my god chris brown's calling me like so i'm with my girl and i'm like chris brown just called me my girl jamiah and she's like 
shit, what does he want? I'm like, I don't know. He just sent me his address. He's like, pull up. We're in the studio. We vibing. So, of course, that's how they lure you in. <laughs> the studio. We vibing. That, that's how they lure you in. <laughs> Mental note. I'm going to say that one day. Yeah, no. It's how they lure you in. Is like, oh, yeah, they try to lure me in because they know I do music. So, they're like, oh, come do music. Mm. And then I'm like, okay, let's do it. You know, I'm excited. I'm about to get this feature. We're about to get off, you know? Mm. No, it's not that. You know what I mean? You pull up and it's really not that vibe at all. No, as a woman, you need like fucking five barriers between you and these motherfuckers sometimes. You know what mm. I mean? Because you need the plug to just take care of it and talk to my people. Because at, at that point, sometimes if not, right. it becomes too, you know, mixy. So I get there and it was fucking dope. This first experience like dope. It was like Tiana Taylor was in the room and EJ and all these people. And it was just a vibe. Like everyone was just vibing. Okay. Right. So I'm expecting... So the next, a couple days later, he's like, pull up. Like, you know, we're, whatever. So it's like, <coughs> stop. 1 p.m. <coughs> Do we have tea? <laughs> <laughs> this is tea. Uh, it's not hot enough. She's spilling tea for the record. Uh, yeah, the tea. <laughs> <laughs> See, I know. I, I know, right? <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a fucking disco girl. I know what to say, bro. What? So, we only got coffee, I think, fuck. yeah. Okay. We got so, sugar free Red Bull. Oh yeah, I know I have that too. <laughs> so so then, you know, we I pull up like a couple days later and shit, and like it was not the same experience. Right. So it was just like, what the fuck is going on? I'm with my same girl and she's just like and by the way, I decided to go like covered from head to toe. Cause I'm just like, <laughs> I swear to God, because I was like, I don't want him getting the wrong impression. Full veil or what? Yeah, like if I was wearing with a hijab, like you I did. Was, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't. I just like, you know, like full covered, covered. Wow. Like long sleeves, pants and shit. Shit that I'm I'm always like showing some skin, but I was just like, no. I mean, I think that's smart, honestly. If you're pulling up and you're trying to make it really clear. Yeah, like I really yeah. was. I was very adamant about that. This time when we pull up, there's a few of the dudes, the, you know, his homies and shit, who I didn't like their energy at all. And I'm an energy person, you uh -huh. know? So I'm just like, what is this energy? Like, you're negative, all these negative guys around him. And like, they're like, oh, we need your phones. And I'm like, why? We were just here like a couple days ago and I had my phone in my fucking hand the whole time. I didn't do shit. I don't give a fuck. Uh -huh. What the fuck? I'm not doing that. Like, I'm not giving you my phone. Right. That's not happening. I refuse to give my phone up, like, all the time. You ask me to give my phone up. I'm out. I That's don't give real. a fuck. I'm yeah. not doing this. Because if anything going to pop off, go down. Like, I need my phone with me. I need to call my shooter right away. It is so fucking weird how that shit has become so normal. Like, sometimes I'll have my girl with me and we'll be, like, going to hang out with some rappers and shit. And, like, she'll at some point realize she's the only one who's still got her phone. Yeah. Because, like, she's with me, so she's allowed to have her phone. But yeah. all the other girls are not allowed to have their phone. It's such no, a weird period. double that's, standard, And that's right? the thing. That's the fucking thing. And that's what, like, even, like, recently my girl was, like, talking to one of Trippy's people or whatever. So she's, like, pull up to the studio. And I literally, they were, like, oh, give us your phone. And I was, like, no, I'm out. And once I did that, like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I was, like, no, I'm out. And they let me keep my phone. Because uh. I was, like, I'm leaving. What the fuck? I don't need to be here. I don't give a fuck. Right. Like, once you, that vibe, they're, like, oh, okay, you're cool. But, yeah. like, once you, if you give that vibe of, like, oh, no, like, okay, here you go. Like, they don't respect you. And you're going to fucking respect me. Or else I'm out. I don't give a fuck. It is crazy. I'm a fighter, so because, because <laughs> I'll fight. Because the, the shit that you're describing of, like, mansion parties and shit with just coke everywhere and naked bitches and shit. It's like, if everybody had their phones, bro, that shit would be leaking all that over That shit would be place. leaking everywhere, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's me. Thank you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Laura. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I just feel like, wait, what? Is it good? Wait, what's wrong? Is it okay? You have more over there. No, I know, but it's cold. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> and he's so hot. Wow. Mm. Um. Yeah, so it's just, yeah, it's a lot. And, you know, for me, like, I'm not, like, I smell weed and shit, but I'm not, like, into, you know. Right. Like, I don't really like all that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've dabbled, but I don't like it. The so. coke thing is... Yeah, you I don't want to make that a lifestyle. I think it's very overrated, bruh. I really do. I'm sorry, but like maybe the MS thing was like a blessing in disguise for me because of that and my treatment and shit. They check my blood every so seven, it's two super months. important that you stay healthy now because yeah. of this. Yeah, super mm. important, and I'm so healthy. So because of that, it's like a blessing because like you know, of course, it's LA. Like I've literally been, you know, you'll be with someone and then all of a sudden you find out like they they're like hiding the fact that they're doing all this mm. coke for me. Like it's so, so sad. Weird. And I and I feel like when you do coke, you find out everyone who's doing coke because they end up offering it to you and Period. shit. But if you don't do it, then motherfuckers keep it super so secret. secret. And now I'm back in the position what? where I haven't done coke in so many years that yeah. it's like now I don't Everyone's fucking know. Everyone's so secretive. Laura, are you doing coke? I don't know. <laughs> Laura? No, she said no. Okay. Um, <laughs> but you know, just in general, it's like, I, I, I. but to me, I just don't 
don't understand that mentality because yes, it feels good. Yes, it's crazy. It's fun. It's just not worth what comes afterwards. Yeah. It's like I would way rather be steady and and feel good all the time than like have these crazy spikes in my enjoyment I'm level that are followed lie. by these massive fall offs. Period. And you in know? LA, it's kind of like scary because it's like you'll think you'll know someone, completely know them. Mm. Like I literally like eat friends or people, whatever, whatever, you know? Right. And then it's like you find out that they do heavy amounts of coke. Right. And you're like, how? It's like, how did I not pick up on this shit? Yeah. But yeah, you've been saying up till 6 a.m. every day. And yeah, you've been doing this. Every, well, okay, yeah, it makes sense. Like, you know, because how the fuck can you do that, you know, every day? I just did the interview with Maud's son, and he basically just stopped doing coke after doing it every day for like six, seven years, whatever. And that was kind of what I said is like, bro, I always thought that you just had mad energy and were always down right. to be at the club at four in the morning or whatever. And, and I, I thought, I'm just an old man. Oh, I was just like, I just don't want to party that hard. Oh, you're on drugs. Oh, I should have known. But I'm like a grown ass man and it still doesn't always just, you know, because if you don't see somebody doing it or you don't see the evidence right in front of your face, like he was hiding it from his girlfriend. Yeah. From no, fact. his friends, you know. and That's a fact. Yeah. A lot of people will just literally like completely hide it and just put on this whole persona. And it's like, mm -hmm. fuck, like I did not know. But now I'm trying to get really, I'm trying to get like, like, you know how people have their gaydar or whatever the fuck they say. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to have that radar with. Cokeheads, just Coke so dar, I just yeah. because yeah, you know, because it's just like even Coke when dar. Coke Dar, you think <laughs> it's like even when you're fucking friends with someone and then you find out, damn, you're doing all this coke, like mm. fuck, like this is not good, you yeah, know, because then they become wishy washy and indecisive and all over the place. It's funny like, that you're more like that with like coke though, because I feel like I. And more likely to have friends who just get really into perks or lean or zans, and then they start getting all weird. I've had so many friends over the years that just one day all of a sudden they're just perked the fuck out, and they're just a different person. Yeah, and, yeah. and I could see, I, I could see that more than I see the coke thing. I don't mm. get. I think coke is overrated, but I could see where like. You know, like painkillers and shit. Like I can see where you can get. You well, know I what like I mean? Yeah, I like that shit. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, lie. like you yeah. know what I mean. Like even Zans, like it just chills you the fuck out. Like and when yeah. like, I'm a high, strong, high fucking energy type exactly. person, so that's I why can I've had that. a problem with that shit yeah. in the past because. Yeah. When you have a lot of fucking energy and shit, yeah. and you sort of get into that pattern of using that shit to chill you out, that's what I got fucking into. Exactly. A bit. I mean, for me, if it wasn't again for the MSing, my treatment and shit, like with Zans, like I slowly was just like, okay, mm. I like this. And then that's when it was like, uh, right. stop right now. Like, you know, I was like, I'm gonna go get a prescription for it because I can. Mm. But then it was just like, no, you're not. Like, every you know, girl can get a prescription for it, which is the scary yeah, part. Like, yeah. so many like chicks every, in LA and just, Everyone can get prescriptions like that, which is sad. But mm. it's like, you don't even know what you're going to be doing. And, and then I've seen what, ha what happens to people. Right. So then I have to keep them in mind. You know, like, close friends that, yeah, like, go on this slippery slope of, like, you know, or even one of my good friends, like, my best, one of my best friends, like, he takes Adderall, like, every day. Right. But he has prescriptions. But it's just still, like, I'm like, you know this is not... Okay, yeah. you know, and, and that's what's where I remember a few years ago. I had a girlfriend, and like she goes to the doctor because she was like depressed because she hated her job, yeah, and she felt like her life was pointless. She goes to the doctor, and the doctor ends up giving her Xanax, but she's like a fucking regular ass chick, so exactly. she didn't know about what Xans were like. Exactly, and I'm like, yo, and then you find out, like, oh, yeah, shit. I'm like, listen, I'm like. I know mad people that are super fucked up off this shit. So I'm literally in a position Period. where I'm giving her better advice than the doctor was. I mean, the doctor will just be like, even who for me. Who the fuck am I? Even for me, like being with the MS shit and everything, like the doctor will be like, oh, well, um, do you want do you want this? And do you want this? Like, oh, I'm having mood swings. Oh, well, let's put you on a mood stabilizer. Oh, I'm having this. Oh, well, yeah. let's put you on this. Like, no, what the fuck? I'm already on a heavy medication. You're fucking me up here. That's you know? crazy. Because they just, you know. You know how it goes. How did you end up working with uh, PMB Rock? Was that that was more recent after the whole Fetty Wap saga? Yeah, PMB is like one of my favorite people. Uh -huh. Like I love him. He's amazing. Great guy. I saw him in the airport the other He's day. He's amazing. Yeah. He really is an amazing artist and an amazing person. Like we just did a show together in uh, like Philly, uh -huh. and you know his state. And like um, then afterwards, I was like, yo. Like, I need to get you on a record right now. Let's go to the studio. So we went to the studio that night, and he cut it that night. Right. And it was just like, he didn't ask for nothing. Like, he literally, he showed up to the video shoot, didn't ask for anything. I didn't pay him anything. Like, he just did it off the strength. And it was like, wow. wow. That's dope. Yeah, like, he was, and it was like, now, like, it was like right before he started blowing up, too. So, oh, really? Yeah, like, we had, both of us had way less of a following and stuff when we did it. Oh, so it was what, so, like three, four years ago before he started going nah, crazy? Probably like two. 
Oh, okay. One and a half, you know? Word. Because I feel like in the last year, he's really started going crazy, in yeah. my opinion, I think. Maybe like a year and a half, eh, I think. I don't know. I would be interested to see. I feel like he's had like a pretty strong three, four years. Yeah. I feel like I interviewed yeah, him like almost he was, four years ago. Yeah, he was already hot. Yeah. Like, we were both already hot, but he was he's like really blown up to me, I mm. think. I think. No, that's true. Yeah, so, um, and then, um, yeah, like we just always like, we always had a great vibe, like, you know? And then the other day, even he hit me up and he's like, we got to make another hit. You know, and I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I'm ready. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. He's he's the best. Like I think, and talent wise, like he's super talented. You yeah. know, because it sucks when you're like, oh, this guy got to redo his verse. But with him, it's like, <laughs> yo, he got in there. He wrote his whole shit. Right. You know, he wrote that whole shit. I saw him with my own two eyes. The fact that you made fucking Lil Xan rewrite a verse, that's some legendary shit. We're going to be talking about that for years to come. I wonder if he's going to react. You think he's going to be on the story oh, sad? I mean, that's like more worth it if that's what happens. Oh, shit. I mean, I had to. It was just like, oh, we can't put this out, you know? Yeah, I mean, he has a tendency sometimes when he raps to just sort of like trail off and get a little too mumbly. Yeah, and I just initially like it was just like, you know, I just didn't like I just feel like it was like mediocre mm -hmm. and I just like don't like mediocre shit. Like if we're going to do this, we're going to do it right or we're just not going to do it, you know. That's the attitude. How'd you meet uh Trey Songs? What's your Trey Songs story? Oh my god, I don't know what the fuck just happened. A couple weeks ago, we were at the club. <laughs> I was doing this hosting at somewhere and like um all of a sudden like he was asking about me in the front, and I'd never fucking met him. So I was like, what? And That's then, a Trey Songz move. You ask the club staff about the girls that you think are cute in the club. He came to the club and, and literally was like, hey, where's Inez? And like, and he knew I was like hosting that night or whatever. So he came and was like asking the people in the front, bring me to her right now. Right. And it was weird because I'd never met him. So uh -huh. I was like, why is he? Like, I don't know. She probably told you about that. He's doing work. He's like she just straight up doing research seeking out women that he hasn't had sex with since he's had sex with such a large percentage of them yeah and it's like for me i just feel like okay listen homie like i'm <laughs> i'm 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 cool like come to the section it's fine uh -huh. but then the whole thing was so weird Why? because he came to my section like literally was just like saw that i had a lot of people in my section too many people didn't really like it so asked for his own section and i was like okay whatever and then, like, when I left, because I went to leave and I had, like, a green hair at the time. I don't know. It was going crazy with the green hair. Respect. And then he, like, literally followed me out, but did not, like, he, like, tr like feel like every time he tried to, like, talk to me or say hi to me or something, there was always someone with me. Or there was always some, you know what I mean? And you know when, like, how dudes are when they see a guy with you? Like, it was probably the security guard or fucking manager or someone, you know, my video guy or something. But he's thinking, oh. You know, so I think he just was like a little weird and he would just like didn't say hi to me. He was like, he was like a shy boy. I was like, what's going on? Like, shy I'm so, boy. I was so confused. And I was like, I was asking everyone around me, like, am I going crazy? Or was like, did he just follow me out and just come to the, and just come to the section and just ask, like, why? Yeah. And like, I don't know. I still haven't figured it out. Holy shit. Yeah. It's just weird. That is weird. Just it's like <laughs> coming to the club, asking for someone, and then just like, you know, and then not coming and then not talking to them much or like, you I know what I mean? I love the Trey Songs meme that he's basically just like following Jordan Woods and, and Meg around to all their club performances. <laughs> Do you believe that? Oh, so he does that. <laughs> I he mean, just does it. It's a thing. It's I'm sure. Like I'm sure. The idea of it or whatever. It's like just so often when I talk to a random girl on this podcast, they just have like a Trey Song story. And I'm like, damn, I feel bad for him because like him wanting pussy is becoming a meme. But my thing is, is like, I feel like nowadays it's so much more respectable to be with one woman mm. and you know what i mean it's respectable like for me i don't like guys like that right like, i don't care like you fuck too many girls mm. and we all know about it and it's like i just now that i'm like you know i'm not young and naive in the industry anymore i know what's good the fuck is going on right. so it would be like no bro like the way guys look at girls like she's ran through you know what I mean? That's how we look at a lot of guys nowadays, right. too. Like, he's ran through. I mean, yeah, and not even, like, the idea that it's gross, but so much as that, like, if a guy seems like they're dedicating yeah. their entire life. To like, getting I've, pussy I've just instead known of getting so many, money. You know, I've known so many dudes like that in my life, and when I really think about it, it's like, I feel lucky that I've been in a relationship for three years because the whole part of my life where I right. was, like, pretty well-known and getting money – I've been in a relationship. Right. So I've been kind of like shielded from that because a lot of these guys, they start getting money and then they just sort of like base their entire life around fucking as many I'm new girls as lie. possible. It's you so know? fucking, honestly, it's so respectable, especially when your bitch is bad mm. and, and you're letting her be, do her thing. That's mm. so dope. Like that's what girls nowadays, that's what, what the fuck 
we want. We don't want a guy that's been with everybody or that's mm. every week in a new relationship or, you know what I mean? Like, we just don't want that. Yeah. We, like, I don't fucking want that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want that because I'm just like, no, like, I'm not getting ran through right now. So why the fuck are you getting ran through? Like, that's not cool. It's kind of funny, though, because now everybody just assumes the worst of each other. Like, right. if I were single and I were going to the club and I met some random hot girl in the club, in my mind, she fucked 18 dudes this week. Like, I'm just assuming the worst because... I know chicks that are like that, so it makes me feel like everybody's Everyone's like, like that. that, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, but you know what, though? What I've learned, I'm not going to lie, like, it's like that whole saying, if they walk like a duck, talk like a duck, it's a fucking mm. duck. And that's my whole thing. Like, if you act like a hoe and you're moving like a hoe, you're a hoe. I don't mm. care. And I'm, it's, it's power to you. Go be a hoe. But go mm. be a hoe over there. But there's a lot of girls I know who are like that. They're private Snapchat, uh, porn stars, whatever, and they're super open and honest about the right. fact that they're like that. But then I also, like... Sometimes she'll be like talking to a girl and she seems super sweet and nice or whatever. And then you end up in the club with her and you realize this bitch knows everybody. Right. And, and it's scary like, when they know everyone because like, why do you know everyone? You know, and it's sort of like just makes you a little curious. Like, <laughs> damn, how much time are you really spending in, in the this club? fucking place? Yeah. <laughs> no, you know what? It's a fact. And I'm not even going to lie to you. i rather fucking meet. Like, you know, it's like nowadays if you're meeting, like even with him, like you're, you, we meet at the club. Like, ugh. Right. like, mm. you know, that's so like, uh, uh, I don't want that. And like, you know, yeah. like. Come on. Because it's just like, if we're going for a bag, then yes. Right. If we're going to get money, then yes. You know what I mean? But other than that, you it's ever like, been on a dating site? Um, no. Right. I've never tried it. Like, okay, so two years ago, um, a after all this shit happened, right? Mm. Like, I had like this woman in my life who was like super older than me, and she was like, You have to start being smarter like you need you can't do this like being stupid thing like you have to be smarter than this right so she was like trying to like get me to like go on seeking arrangements and shit so i was like okay you make me account and you do that i'm not doing shit i don't want to do shit right but i just never followed through with anyone and i just couldn't do it like seeking I arrangements like you were gonna try to do the sugar daddy type yeah thing. and i couldn't do it like she was like oh this guy he's 30 something 40 something and i'm like i can't i Ugh, just i'm sorry yeah. i just can't do it like i just can't so i would yeah. just Blow them all off. Everyone's getting mad. And I was like, just take down my account because I just I'm never going to do it. I like, I like I want to be open minded to that shit. But the truth is, is it just weirds me out. So it weirds bad. me out so much. And, you know, the thing about it is I know it's a thing in L.A. And it was a thing that I became used to in L.A. because everyone does that. And all these girls are like most girls my age are like doing shit like that, you know. Yeah. But I'm like, I have an actual like fucking name I'm building for myself. Mm. So it's like, that's not a good look. I don't that's not my narrative. You yeah. know what I mean? That's not what the fuck I'm selling. That's not my narrative. Like, right. I'm not going to be like, yeah, like, fuck the sugar daddies for money. No, bitch. Yeah, but no. that, that's the crazy shit, too, is that chicks now. I'm sorry, but no. Ch chicks now talk about it like they're hyped on it. They're proud yeah. of it, which is like, it's it's kind of cool to see them like and I saw, empowered. Like, yeah, and I, and I, it's, it's all, that's all nice and shit, but here's the reality of the situation. Mm. They are degrading women, period, and then just like paying them off, and they treat women like shit most of the time. Yeah. Like, and I saw the other day, like Young Miami, like I love her, she's amazing, mm -hmm. and I saw her say that with her boyfriend and shit, and it's like, oh my sugar daddy, like no, he's your boyfriend, mm. he's your bo damn near your husband. You just had a baby with him, but you she know? called him her sugar daddy. Yeah, on oh God, she she posted that and was like my sugar daddy, and I think that that's awesome for you to call him that. But right. that's what the girls are like. Oh yeah, she's like, go get your sugar daddy. And that's what girls are going to start doing. And I just feel like, no, I don't want that. Like, I don't want a sugar daddy. Like, I want a man who's going to, we right. are equal. We take care of each other. And you, you do shit for me. I do shit for you. Then you can actually like, build something where you're yeah. on, like, equal footing. Like, you know? I fucking love what Kim and Kanye are doing. They're fucking dope. Like, right. that is dope. You right. know what I mean? Like, that's her fucking husband. And he's like, that's my wife. Like, right. that's hot. That you know what I mean? In it. Yeah, I yeah, that's hot. That's mm. hot. Not like, oh, my sugar daddy. Nah, nah. No. <laughs> no, because most of the time, the reality of it is, most of the time in LA, if a girl says she has a sugar daddy, he's 60, 70 years fucking old, yeah. and it's disgusting. And it's like, think about that. Like, you're, you're, you're losing your youth to this old man just mm. for money that tomorrow he can take away from you. Like, no, I'm not into that shit. Right. I think because I come from like a strong, independent woman, my mom has never been on that shit. Right. And I think that, you know, it's the opposite. I've had to deal with different shit, like not being, not taking care of my, whatever the fuck it is. But at least I'm not like degrading myself, you know what I mean, for money. Like, I don't, that's not my shit. That's not my narrative. Like selling your body and shit for money. Power to you if you're doing that. I'm not taking away from the girls who do that. I just don't like that shit. Yeah, like honestly, it doesn't. 
weird me out girls who are like doing the private Snapchat yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't you know? weird me out. That doesn't yeah. weird me out. Go get your money. Yeah, yeah but, but but fucking somebody, fucking from, old men know. or or just a guy, just mm, no. I just I can't. Yeah. I gotta like you. I gotta there gotta be a synergy there, like uh, something. Uh, you know, and it's like I kind of respect chicks who do it because if you can do that and it doesn't and you're bother your you, money. Hey, listen, go ahead. I know girls who are younger than me even who are getting a lot of money from right. doing this shit. Yeah. A lot. And I'm like, listen, I power to you, but then I can't be friends with you. Oh, really? Because, yeah, I've had a lot of girls in L.A. that I, like, um, I'll fuck with. And I, like, fuck with the girl. Like, she's dope as fuck. Yeah. Yeah, but then it's like you find out she's doing that. And it's like, I can't be friends with you because then people are going to think that I do that. And I don't. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know. Interesting. There's a lot of weird shit out here that's going on. My advice to these girls making money off fucking old men is put it in the fucking bank and don't spend it all on purses. Cause yeah, period. <laughs> At least invest in some shit. You know, because like if you if you need to do that when you're young to run up a bag to maybe Fine. be able to do yeah. something else with your life, do I respect it. that right. more than you thinking like, oh, I'm gonna fucking bang <laughs> dudes till I'm 49 years right, old right. or some shit. Yeah, I don't because know. Because then also it's just like you know they just like the way to just dispose of the woman, get away. Like you lost your youth, you lost your beauty, mm. and it's like we're so much more than that. So I don't like that shit. I respect that a lot. Yeah, I don't like that. What do you have in the works in terms of new shit coming out uh, musically or projects? Or what are you working on? Yeah, I'm working on my project. I'm working on an EP right now. And I mean, I think that we have right now we have a little Zan on it, K-Camp. And um, potentially another song with P&B is in the works. Like we've been talking about it, you know. So nice. like right now it's just like for me, like I... Now that I'm out of this deal, I'm just putting out music again, just like getting like just just my shit out there because I was like working on so much for so long and not able to drop. Right. So, yeah, I just dropped my new single, Loca, and that's like doing amazing. So I just like want to keep on just dropping. That's fine. Do you yeah. have like a, a diehard like young girl fan base for the most part? Yeah, like I have like I love that. And I think like a lot of like definitely exotic girls and like mm. girls that like look like me are always like, wow, like, you know, you're doing it like because, you know, being a Middle Eastern girl right. doing this is like not common. People you are know? always so shocked when there's like Middle Eastern girls and like American spotlight. Yeah, you know? I've exactly. Seen that with my girl for sure. Exactly. Mm. You know what I mean? And I think that that's, you know, nowadays it's like we're breaking barriers. You know what I mean? And it's important for us to be free and be able to do that. You know what right. I mean? Because I personally, as a little girl, like, of course, I love like Beyonce and Rihanna and all these. I love Lady Gaga, like all these huge stars. But at the same time, it was like, oh, no one looks like me. And that mm. like sucks. You know what I mean? But it's like being Middle Eastern, you know why? Because it's always like they try to like control you, suppress you, mm. not let you do shit. You know what I mean? And for me, I've always been like a very like, oh, like very empowered, very like, mm. I'm going to do it. I don't care. You know, I've always been that kind of girl. So right. I think now it's like I've used it and I'm like, I'm empowered and I feel powerful. So I want to. Make other girls, especially well, other people, but especially girls feel that way. Because, I mean, that is happening now, but I also feel like over the next 10 years, it's going to be fucking crazy to see how, like, women basically, like, rise up and, like, demand their rights and That's Middle what's going countries. on. Yeah. And that's why it's important for, you know, I, I'm so adamant. And, like, I don't even like to even, you know, with the women who are doing that kind of stuff, I don't want it to be like, I don't like putting any woman down. So I don't want it to be like that. Right. But my thing is, is, like, there's a lot of women right now that are going through a lot of suppression around the world mm -hmm. and aren't allowed to even go outside of their house. Right. And I think it's important to empower them and let them know that you are so valuable. You can do anything that you want. You don't need anyone. You don't right. need a man, a woman, nothing. You could do it. Anything you want to do, you can go out and you can do it. Anything you want. So I think it's important to empower the woman as her own. Yeah. And that's what I really want to do. You know what I mean? Like as your own, on your own, you are fucking unstoppable, yeah. you know? So like that's like so important to me because I think that, you know, I see I know that there's especially especially being like I'm Palestinian and there's so many girls, you know, in the Middle East right. that aren't allowed to do anything. And they know? don't really I mean, that shit is really fucked up because not only do they not really have like the role model like you necessarily who's telling them that it's OK to have the attitude, but they're just really like not even allowed to do right. shit to drive and shit in a yeah. lot of countries. A lot I mean, that's of, yeah. crazy, bro. And I mean, for me, it's like I've always like been super like. Because I was raised Muslim, right? Mm. And I just feel like I always saw the woman being treated as secondary. Mm. And I just have always been like, no, about that. You know what I mean? You I've never always, like grew to think that was normal and acceptable? No, never, really? never. And I just like, because my mom is a Christian convert. My mom is, her family's Christian. 
And like my mom was born in Bethlehem, like where Jesus was born, like wow. crazy. Yeah. So she came from like the strict Christians. She was in like a nunnery, like, you know, like her, she, like her parents wanted her to be a fucking nun. Like that was what my mom's experience was. But then she married a Muslim man. My father was Muslim. So, and my stepfather was Muslim. So it's like that whole like religious, that it's just crazy that all of the, what the religion does, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm, my religion, I say is love. I just like want to just, I love love and I feel like God is love and I'm a spiritual person. I'm right. not really religious. I'm spiritual. And I feel like with the whole like religion thing, they just like force these people to do these things that they don't want to do. And then mm -hmm. it leads a lot of people to not being happy. Right. And I think that's a problem right now. Like so many people are unhappy and it's like, why? It's like the institution of religion has been fucked up. You know what I mean? And I feel like the whole, I would go to the mosque every Friday and my stepfather was teaching the religion, who's a big hypocrite. So that was a lot. And you know what I mean? Real shit. So that was like, what the fuck? Yeah. And then going to the mosque and seeing like women being treated like badly was, or in some places was hard for me to watch. Right. So I just feel like I would just be like, no, I don't like this. And I think the religion is beautiful. I think the way that a lot of people interpret it is what's mm. fucked up, you know? Yeah. And how they, what they decide to teach. And, you know, like I had my like little baby cousin who was like 10 and was like, I can't wear nail polish. It's a sin. Oh I'm like, gosh. girl, like, I hate that they're teaching you this. Like, I hate that this is what they're teaching you. Instead of right. being how to be a good person yeah. and what to do to be happy and be successful, they're teaching you, oh, you can't wear nope. Get the fuck out of here. No, uh, we're not doing that. The crazy thing about it, though, is that, like, religions can and do change over time because when I think about the version of Christianity that, like, my grandparents had, it was so goddamn strict versus, like, the version of Christianity that most people I know right. have now. It's just right. basically like, hey, peace and love, be nice to everybody, rah, rah, rah. Whereas, like, you know, and I feel like like Islam is kind of like especially resistant to that, though, yeah. that they don't want to just like turn it over and, and allow it to just become like everything else. Because like Christianity these days basically sort of like reaffirms our mainstream culture yeah. just like be nice and like buy stuff and sit on your Especially couch and watch Connie tv teaching yeah. it. They, they sort of like washed away any sort right. of like negative thing that might be associated with the religion in general right. and like oh that don't take that literally right you right know? yeah and i have like a lot of friends too who are like born and raised christian and mm. they're like super about christianity and jesus and then i have other ones who are like anti-christianity like right. it just i feel like depends on their experience and for me like my experience was just like i loved the religions, I loved all of that. I just hated the way they were treating, especially women. And I was like, no, mm. this is not it. And I don't like this. And I don't respect this. I don't want this. You know? Do you get a lot of blowback from having the boss to say that as a Muslim woman? I feel like now that I am like, I feel like a lot of people support it more than they go against it. Like, you know, even though I was like raised Muslim, I don't identify with Islam. I just identify with like just being love you know right. and just being a spiritual person and i feel like you know it's about spirituality connecting with your spirit your soul you mm -hmm. know what i mean and when i was practicing islam i didn't connect with myself i didn't feel anything right. you know and i would like do the prayer five times a day and i just didn't feel shit yeah. and like it was i was going to christian like catholic school and i didn't feel shit either there at mass and shit i didn't I did feel lot, anything i did a lot of praying yeah. I never really felt anything. You didn't feel shit. You didn't feel shit. You know what I mean? And then like when I started doing like, you know, practicing spirituality and just talking to God and just connecting with myself and, you know, like I'm a yogi. I love yoga. I love boxing and shit too, but I love yoga. And like, I just really love connecting. Like I love connecting myself, connecting with other people. Like I love it. I love connection mm. and I just want to feel connected. And I feel like a lot of the time you might practice this religion, but not feel connected. You know what I mean? Mm. And I sat there and I will read the books just to read and learn what i want to learn you know because right. i think like when you learn you earn you know what i mean and that adds to your earnings which is great and i love learning but it's like i don't like a lot of the way the people do their shit or interpret it or the way they teach it right. or and especially the way like you know they treat people because mm -hmm. of it and like i'll sit there like i right now i'll go to like you know i've tried like mosaic and like you know one church and like all these churches out here <laughs> i love those they're like just all these like fun. hip fun they're new just churches fun, you know? they're not really one, religious so, yeah, they're not religious they're fun they're right. nice it's nice it's like that thing it's like what you said like positive affirmations they're designed 
to make people want to go to church yeah. by like stripping away all the not fun shit. Exactly. When I think about my childhood, Sundays for me were just dreading having to go sit on these fucking wooden benches and Period. just howl these lame Or get on your knees and shit and, and you're like, eh, I don't want to. Yeah, it's like <laughs> Sunday. I've been in school all week. This is the last thing I want to do. Yeah. Yeah, it felt period. felt so wrong to me as a kid. Exactly. It does. It feels like what's going on? And that's the thing. It's the, I like those places and then my girl is Korean so I went to a Korean church. You know what I mean? Like my friends like, you know, I'll go to like, you know, all kinds of churches really singing their asses off and i love the experiences you know right. like i'm the type that as long as i feel something i'm down you know but yeah. if i don't feel shit no i can't maybe i should probably just go to like a black church because i it's feel like so I, would, fun. I would like the vibes I it's bet. so fun they're singing their asses off <laughs> you know like i feel like i would like the music yeah and i would like the vibes yeah but then it would be really funny because everybody would be like look at adam joining a black church yeah exactly exactly but you <laughs> know what that's how it. i felt in the korean church too because <laughs> right, i was yeah. in this fucking korean church the only non-korean and because like, now it's really cool to be Korean. Yeah. K-pop taking over the world, you know? It's like, look how bad Adam yeah. wants to be hip-hop. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Look how bad he wants to be Korean now. They'll never say shit like that, but it's like, what the fuck? Hey, <laughs> but I, it's it, it's like, I just want to experience this. But like, if you drop a K-pop album... I went to a church in fucking Compton, I'm not going to lie to you, and it was fucking epic. See, like, that is what I feel like I would fuck yeah, with. Yeah, it was yeah. so epic. Like, it's just like, it's a, it's an experience. Like, you know, and they have food after, and like, you know, same thing with the... A lot of cultural... Churches like that are like super have food after, and I love to eat. So if there's like, any uh, churches in Compton that want to have us out, we'd yeah. be happy to we come out. through. Yeah, <laughs> we'll pull up. I don't know if we'd be accepted or not, but hey, why not? Hell yeah, we would. They'd be like, "Where are we lit?" <laughs> I gotta bring some some of my guys with me for sure. Yeah, yeah. facts. Yeah, <laughs> we can shoot us just, in just case. to make sure that everybody knows. Like an upside down cross on my face, but I yeah. come in peace, man. I know, right? Facts. <laughs> um, all right, hey, I appreciate you coming on so much. I appreciate you so much. I fucking love watching you. I'm always watching, so. I appreciate that so Big much. Fans. That's amazing. I'm going to tell my girlfriend to watch this one. Yeah, yeah. I fuck with your girlfriend. She's a shit. That's yeah, fine. She's sexy ass. Appreciate Middle that. Middle Eastern woman. We on. What's up? Her Instagram's on the screen. Make sure everybody, you go follow. It's nice meeting you. So nice meeting you. You're fucking epic. <laughs> Thank he's you. He's even better in person. It's lit. <laughs> wow. He's not one of those. He's not one of those that's whack in person. No, he's dope. Aww. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. Like, comment, subscribe. NoJumper.com if you want to support. We got the No Jumper Kush. Go to your local dispensary. Tell them you need it. Appreciate y'all. Hey, it's your girl Inez X. And I know you love the video, so you better like, comment, and subscribe now. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and all that stuff. Inez X, I-N-A-S-X. Follow No Jumper and get all their amazing merch now.